Welcome back. I'm today with Thomas Bibet from DC Brain, so we can talk concretely about what is the experience of innovators in the energy sector. Uh, Thomas, first, uh, thank you very much for, for making the time. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, tell us uh, a little bit more about you. For how long have you been working on energy innovation? So I've been working on you know, in, in energy innovation for about four years now uh, with DC Brain. I have a background into uh, deep tech startup international uh, business development. So before AI and uh, digital energy innovation, I was into biotechs. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's about four years now in energy. Okay. Um, and so at DC Brain, once you had your uh, idea of using um, AI for the energy uh, sector, uh, to get started, you needed resources, you needed uh, staff, offices, uh, clients, money. Uh, where did you get those things to start? Well, we've been um, very much very well uh, supported by the, the Parisian ecosystem and, and notably uh, by the ecosystem of, uh, founded by the schools of our founders, so okay. namely Telecom Paris Tech. Uh, in which we stay for about two years and a half, first uh, in their uh, early stage incubator in Rue Daro, and then into the small and medium enterprise uh, builder, the SME builder around Place d'Italie. We stayed there uh, pretty much until we were too big to fit in the offices. <laughs> okay. So how much time did it take from the moment where you, you, you started within those incubators and the moment where you can uh, continue outside of the, uh, the incubator? Well, the Parisian ecosystem now is, is very well structured. So when we were too big to stay into the Telecom Paris Tech SME Builder, mm -hmm. we were accepted into the Station F on the okay. AI uh, factory Microsoft program. So we stayed there another extra uh, year and a half. And then it was really time to pay rent. <laughs> Okay. Um, and at the beginning of this journey, were you helped by uh, business angels? Uh, absolutely. So right at first, uh, we were spotted and supported by Inno Energy. So a few words about them. Inno Energy is uh, the European cluster dedicated to different fields in innovation, but mostly digital and uh, energy is one of their main verticals. Um, so they, they invested a, a seed round. Um, which allowed us to, to solidify the, the valuation of the company and then move on to further fund, funds. Okay, so you said seed round. W what is a seed round? So a seed round is, is, is basically before Series A, so it's before you're seriously raising money. Mm -hmm. A seed round is going to include friends and families, okay. uh, early business angels, people who uh, somehow give you trust. Okay. And so here you, you have a, a range of money gathered during the seed round of, you know, can, can you give a, a rough figure? Are we talking, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions? Uh, no, we're, we're rather about a, a 150K uh, top, top. Okay, so 150,000 uh, euros to, to mm -hmm. start with. Okay. Um, who were the, the fir those first people that uh, invested uh, in your startup? Apart from uh, EIT, you know, Energy, what were the others? Um, so for seed round, that, that's about it. Then we moved to uh, the founders, obviously invested some of their own money. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we moved to Serie A. And in that case, uh, the, the, the round was led by Astor Capital, venturing arm of, of Schneider Electric. Okay. BP France was following, obviously. And then we had some uh, private investors, uh, people influential into the French and uh, European energy, energy industry. Okay, so you have private investors, uh, you have a company, uh, Schneider Electrics, uh, and you also have public support then with the, uh, with the BPE, which is a national uh, bank. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what were the expectations of those uh, funders when they decided to invest in DC Brain? Well, their expectations was uh, mainly to, 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 well, first of all, put a foot into a new generation in technologies that's going to renew or Uberize or disrupt uh, the, the, the sector of model-driven solvers uh, that companies such as Schneider Electric, uh, ABB, GE, and so on and so forth have been selling throughout the industry for the last uh, 50 years or so. Okay. Um, secondly, it was to have a, a, a technology that allowed to bring about the energy revolution uh, in, in reality, because in fact, uh, bringing an energy revolution is about being able to manage ever-growing uh, complexity into physical flows, energy flows, and so on and so forth. And the only way you can do that is using data, using AI, uh, shifting to something else than uh, technical equations. Okay. 
So, so what's DC Bring bringing exactly on, on that issue? So basically, we, we do data-driven digital twins of complex physical flow networks uh, related to energy, but, but not only. Mm -hmm. um, and we run uh, simulation and predictions for complex network managers in a data-driven way using graph, deep learning, machine learning, uh, and, and not uh, first principle models, fluid mechanics, uh, Bouchouin okay. Kirchhoff for electricians, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's about um, electricity networks. Could also be about district heating, for instance. Absolutely, we have a very strong traction right now into uh, district heating and gas networks throughout Europe. Uh -huh. uh, and, and these two types of, of networks are, are really uh, central, important to bring about the energy revolution on our, in our you know, at a continental continental scale. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so, who was the the first client of DC Brain, and how did you uh, did you actually get you know uh, this client to, to sign off with you? So at first we, we did some serious POCs with uh, POCs P proof of concept proof sorry of concept, okay. <laughs> with uh, with telco companies um, uh, that the founder just had exited uh, okay. the, the big French telcos, uh, but our first real customer was Enedis, the the French power DSO. Uh, we participated into the uh, first uh, big national big data uh, contest organized mm -hmm. by them. They gave us five years of incident logs over the Paris power grid. And we came back with the exact topology of the Paris electricity network, okay. which is uh, quite secretive information. <laughs> so they asked us, but who gave you that? And we answered back, well, that was in the incident logs that you gave us. Uh, and from that point on, we became um, sort of uh, the, the AI startup of Enedis's executive committee, and <laughs> it, it really helped us uh, to scale up. Okay. So um, in your experience at DC Brand, what are the, the key ingredients, the key factors that make an energy innovation a successful one? Well, if you think about the energy revolution as, in fact, a distribution, broader distribution, more capital of both production and and uh, consumption. That means you have you need to have technologies, systems that are highly and easily scalable to different situations, different systems, different part of the world. Uh, and then the second important key ingredient for successful successful in energy innovation is I think automation. Okay. In the world of data, uh, you need to have softwares, systems that maybe not think them by themselves, but then can go beyond large numbers of correlations to causality search and have some degree of understanding of what's going on. Okay. And so la last question, with all your experience, uh, both as an individual, but also within DC Brain, uh, what would be your advice to European policymakers? What can they do to help uh, startups to, uh, to provide the innovative uh, solutions we need for the energy transition? Well, in my experience, I think um, um, that public authorities should now push uh, the topic of open data throughout the continent. Uh, it's very important that uh, anonymized data set, but data set concerning also infrastructures are now opened to uh, diversity of people working on technologies to leverage value over them. It will also uh, give us the means to react to hostile uh, attacks on our infrastructures. Uh, the fact is that bad guys already have access to that information, mm -hmm. so policymakers should make sure that the good guys also have a, a, an access. And then the second thing I would like to ask to our dear viewers mm -hmm. uh, is it is very important to, to, to push forward in Europe um, uh, the possibility to do self, uh, to self produce and self consume your energy in your own home. It's, it, so there's the diversity of situations throughout Europe, but in France, it's made very difficult, um, and, and that is key to, to so citizens can, can uh, grasp the energy revolution by themselves. Okay. Well, many thanks, Thomas. Thank you.